So we are here with Justin Viggs from the Lake Villa Fire Protection District. Uh, welcome, Jason. Thank you for joining the Chamber of Commerce and uh, talking to us about fire safety today. How long have you been at the, the fire department? Uh, well, I've been with uh, Lake Villa Fire Protection District for about six years now. Uh, this is the start, though, of my first year working as a career full-time member, however. I've been in the Ooh. fire service for about 15 years. Okay. Now, do you live locally in the area? or uh, Lake County did. I, currently, I reside in Beach Park. Okay. Awesome. Well, I will turn it over to you. Tell us what we need to do to be safe this holiday season. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, hello, everyone. As Jamie said, my name is Justin Biggs with the Lake Villa Fire Department. Hope everyone's doing well, and I thank all of you who are out there for attending. Uh, you know, this year's been kind of challenging for many people, and we've all had to learn how to do things just a little bit differently. So when Jamie invited me to participate in this webinar series, I was all about it because it was just another avenue to get our fire prevention uh, education out to you guys. You know, this year, due to coronavirus, we weren't able to host an open house. We were kind of bummed out about that. So I thought it would be kind of fun to conduct this webinar mobily, so to speak, off my phone, give you a little bit of tour of our firehouse and talk about some holiday fire prevention. So I do apologize for some of the movement ahead of time. And we're also gonna see just how well holding a phone in selfie mode works for 20 to 30 minutes. Um, if we have any questions, you can go ahead and uh, type them into the chat. Jamie's gonna field them for me. We might take some questions, maybe like 10 minute mark or at the end, depends on what really comes in. But otherwise we will go from there, okay? So, you know, this time of year, people are really busy. We ourselves, we've got to take some time, a couple of seconds just to think about safety and the busy, chaotic holiday life that we're living right now. It's gonna go a long way to keeping our families safe. All right, um, right now I am here at our Lake Villa Fire Station number two. This is considered our headquarters station. So the Lakeville Fire Protection District, it has four stations and we operate off of what's called a jump company model. So there's three firefighters at each station. Depending on the nature of the call is gonna dictate what kind of uh, vehicle apparatus goes out the door. So it'll either be an ambulance or a piece of fire equipment. So we have 12 firemen on a day and one battalion chief to oversee the operations. I'm gonna flip my camera view around because where I'm starting this webinar is where we usually end an in-person tour because this is where all the fun stuff is. I'll flip the camera around just so you can see the rigs and we'll start working our way through the presentation here. There we go. All right, so here you can see we've got our engine. We also have a, a ladder truck here at our station. We just took uh, possession of it last year. So it's a new piece of equipment for us. We're pretty excited. And then of course, like I said, uh, the majority of our calls, we get quite a bit of EMS. So we have our ambulance sitting here with the battalion chief vehicle parked over there. And as I said, just depending on the nature of the call is gonna dictate what kind of vehicle goes out the door. There we go, switch the mode again. So, Decorating for the holidays, right? So we wanna take care when we decorate our homes for the holidays. I'm gonna go ahead and we are gonna start with one of the big household decoration items, the Christmas tree. Hopefully you can see my little tree there. Now, a lot of families, they have, they'll have artificial trees or they'll have live trees. I myself, I have an artificial tree, but I can also see just how fun of a tradition it can be um, going out and picking a tree one that's special for your family for the season. So hopefully I can give you some tips here to keep you guys safe when it comes to live trees. So with a live tree, whether you are on the lot or a big box store picking up the live tree, you want to take your hand and kind of run it through the branches, okay? If you end up with a palm full of needles, that means that tree is too dry. Also, if you're at a tree lot or when you get home, if you're able to, you want to cut off like an inch to two inches of the bottom of the tree. That's gonna give that tree a fresh cut so that it can easily absorb water. These trees in their early stages, they absorb quite a bit of water and you have to be pretty diligent with watering them every day. 
Okay, so if you don't water them every day, the tree is going to dry out. A dry tree is a bigger fire hazard than a well watered tree, and it's going to burn a lot faster. So Jamie's going to show a video to you of what happens with a live Christmas tree that's dry, it's exposed to an ignition source, and just how fast it catches fire. There's a little clock in the bottom of the video that I want you to pay attention to, uh, and just see how fast this fire takes off, and think to yourself, what would I do if this happened in my house? Would I be able to get out in time? But just take a look and notice around the 20 second mark how well involved this room is. So the tree that's not watered is dry. You see the ignition source take off. Fire is burning. 20 seconds, just look at how big this fire has developed. It's gonna to start to engulf the entire room. It's gonna flash over in this room. It doesn't take much time to get these things going. That's why we need to be particularly careful with our trees. And that should be pretty good for the video there, Jamie. Perfect. So. Hopefully that video just kind of stresses a little bit of the care we need to take with the tree and maybe what we need to do in our households when it comes to practicing fire prevention. All right, another thing we want to remember with our tree is the placement. All right, we want, don't want to put it next to any heat sources. Try and keep away from vents, that's going to dry it out. Um, but as you saw in the video, in a typical spot for a tree, I put my tree in the corner. Well, something that's in the corner that catches fire is gonna grow even faster. It's by a wall, it's reflecting the radiant heat for what is actually burning and it's gonna get going a lot quicker. Now I'm not advocating that you guys stick your tree in the middle of the room and have everybody walk around it, but what I'm simply trying to hammer home here is we need to be mindful of where we place it, okay? Another thing, so you think artificial trees are safer? Safer? Not really. Um, Underwriters Laboratories, which is an independent company that conducts safety and quality tests on a broad range of products, has found that artificial trees, certain ones, can burn just as vigorously as a dry tree. So what it comes down to is your placement, keeping away from a heat source, even candles. Candles are definitely something we want to pay attention to in the holidays, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm going to flip my camera. A, Go ahead. I have, a quick, I have a quick question for you, Justin. Yeah outside of the candles and like a heating vent what other items would cause an ignition of a tree is it really I mean, so the light the lights alone i mean you should be really checking the lights before you put them on the tree right and make sure that they're not broken and yep correct so i've got some lights here i'll show you here in a second but that's definitely something even if it's pre-lit you want to be looking at those wires and making sure there's no bare wires they're not frayed um the bulb the little bulb holders aren't cracked and mm -hmm. uh, just kind of doing the general maintenance. And then of course, and we'll talk about space heaters later too. Some people use space heaters, right? They have them in the home, they fall over, they can cause a big problem, especially mm -hmm. if the safeties fail. Right, awesome. All right, let me flip my camera around really quick. So what I was talking about here, okay, this is a pre-lit tree and I forgot to light it. I feel kind of bad. Uh, when you're looking at your lights, like I said, you wanna check your wires. And then you wanna make sure that you're using lights, even lights that you're using outside that are meant for their purpose. So when I'm talking about that, I mean indoor versus outdoor. They also make indoor outdoor combination lights, but the big thing is, if you look at the end of the wire, these are UL safety certified. I've got that upside down. Okay, so this has gone on under testing to be certified by UL to be safe for its intended purpose. Flip back around here. Perfect. All right, so we talked about our lights in our tree. We're gonna move this tour into the firehouse. I'm gonna kind of show you a little bit of the firehouse as we work our way to one of our favorite spots, which is the kitchen, because that's gonna lead into some great talk about a lot of holiday pastimes where we spend a lot of time with friends and family, preparing some meals and making memories. Let's flip this around so you can see where we're going. 
So we're walking in off the apparatus bay. Lights might be off in here, but we've got our battalion chief office. This is where the gentleman who kind of oversees the operations for the day, he does his office work. I'm gonna work our way down in the hallway to the kitchen. All right, so did you guys know that kitchen fires are number one cause of house fires and that unattended cooking is the leading cause of kitchen fires? So hopefully some of these tips I give you can help prevent some of these down, these problems down the road for you. We're gonna make our way around the corner and see what the guys are doing. I'm gonna flip my camera around. What's going on guys? Hey, how we doing? Good. What are we cooking? Tacos. Tacos. We got Battalion Chief Dane Costello, Firefighter Noreen, Lieutenant J. Vance, and then the cook for today is Firefighter Shipley. So when we're talking about kitchen safety, right? We want to look at the overall kitchen. And one of the big things is making sure that you have a clear cooking area. You know, something that we see in our kitchen every day becomes kind of a common item. It's something we're used to seeing. And you might kind of just forget that it's sitting there and it might be a little bit too close to the stove. So you want to pay extra attention when you are starting to cook. Another thing that Firefighter Shipley here is demonstrating very well, he has his pan handles turned inward. Having a pan handle outward is only going to set us up for failure. One, we're going to knock our food and ruin our dinner, end up ordering pizza, but we're going to get some pretty bad burns on ourselves. So you definitely, when you cook, you want to turn your pans inward, okay? He also has another practice that I'm proud of him for. He's got a pan lid sitting nearby. What's the pan lid for besides cooking? Well, if you end up with a small fire in the pan per se, uh, you can go ahead and turn the heat off to the pan. You're going to take the lid and you're going to slide it carefully over the top and that's going to put the fire out. Now, if you are in doubt or you think that fire is just too big, you're going to want to get out of the house, okay? You want to get out of the house, call 911. And if you think about it, you want to close the door behind you because that's going to kind of limit the oxygen that's coming in the house and slow its growth down until we can get there to put it out, okay? So when in doubt, this is what we teach the kids, when in doubt, get out. Another thing we want to do is we want to have kind of like a three foot clear safety zone for the kids around anything that we're using to cook with, where we are um, serving hot foods or liquids, all right? Three foot safety zone for the kids because the little ones, when they're running around, they're not thinking, okay? We got to look out for them. And then one more thing I'll talk about for kitchen safety is ever so important. Hot and pan holders, okay? Not only do these prevent burns, but remember how I said unattended cooking is the leading cause of kitchen fires? Well, sometimes there's instances where we just can't be around the food all the time, right? Let's say a neighbor comes to the door. We gotta go answer the door. Something you might wanna consider doing is taking that pet pot holder, putting it in your hand. That's gonna serve as a reminder that you have something on the stove cooking. It's also an excellent out if it's that chatty neighbor at the door and you wanna get away really quick. Not that I've done this a couple of times. All right. Over here in the firehouse, you can see, got some nice big recliners. All right, so firefighters, we work for 24 hours. Okay, we're away from home. Our shift day starts at 7 a.m. Typically our work day goes until 4 p.m., sometimes longer depending on the needs of the department. During that day, we're training, we're cleaning, we're conducting maintenance, um, but otherwise, and then we're running calls. And afterwards though, we gotta come down, we gotta have somewhere we can relax, take care of ourselves and be ready for the next call. Now, kind of walking through here, I kind of spotted something that I'll point out, and this is a big thing because we're using a lot of these during the season. If you see here, we've got an extension cord, but where is this extension cord? It's under the chair. We want to be mindful of these cords being underneath furniture, okay? Furniture, any kind of compression is going to cause damage on these cords and potentially cause a fire hazard. 
Another thing that people do with their extension cords, which we see, and it's just a no-no, is they run it underneath carpeting, right? They don't want the, the trip hazard. Well, if you're putting under carpeting because it's a trip hazard, more than likely, you're walking on top of it, okay? Walking on top of it is physical damage, and that's going to jeopardize the integrity of the cord. Okay. So we'll come out. You notice we have two refrigerators in our kitchen. Two refrigerators because we have quite a few members, couple different shifts, and everybody likes to try and steal everyone's ice cream. It's fantastic. We'll come over here into this room. This is our workout room. Firefighters, we gotta stay in shape so that we can perform what's expected of us, right? So we got a little room here that we can go in and work out when we have some time. We're gonna make our way down to our training room. And as you can see on the wall, there's a mural. These are the original, it's kind of like the founding members of the Lake Villa Fire Department. And if any of you ever have any questions about the history of the department, you can always reach out through our contact information on the website. And we'd be happy to tell you some more. So we're gonna work our way into, this is our training room. So remember how I said we start at 7 a.m. where we're checking out our rigs, doing maintenance, cleaning. Big part of our day is training. This room can accommodate all of our members on shift that day. It can even accommodate some larger classes when we bring instructors in from the outside. So we do quite a bit of training because we're always trying to learn something and be better firemen. Let's come over here. One of the things I wanna talk about really quick with you guys is some of the leading causes of decoration fires in the month of December are caused by uh, candles, okay? If you're gonna use candles, we just need to be smart about it. So putting a candle in place, you wanna make sure it's at least 12 inches away from anything that can catch fire, all right? We don't wanna leave it on when we go out or when we're sleeping. I probably won't use them because my cat is crazy and he will knock it over and burn the house down. So be mindful of your candles, make sure they're out when you go to bed and never leave them really, really shouldn't be leaving them unattended either. But a good option, um, besides using a real candle, are these LED candles, and I'll show you how they work. They're inexpensive, and they pretty much give the same effect. Let me kill the lights for you real quick. But they look pretty good, nice, safe. You can reuse them year after year. Not going to start a fire with those. My 14-year-old uh, wanted a candle for her room this year. And I was like, I don't think so. You can't even remember to take the, all the cups out of your room. <laughs> <laughs> so I got her one of those wax melt things that you plug in so because she likes the scents. So then that way she can have her room smell nice okay. without a, an open flame. Those are the one that glows too? Yeah, it was just got the light bulb in it. It's pretty much just a light bulb that heats, you know, a, a, a little thing of wax on the top of it. Gotcha. So better than an open flame being left open. <laughs> Absolutely, 100% better. Um, so we'll finish up with two more things I like to talk about. Home heating, right? People are using space heaters this time of year. Space heaters are really only meant for supplemental heating, okay? Just like the stove, you want to make sure that you have three feet of clearance around the space heater. It needs to be on a flat level surface. We don't want to put it on cabinets or on furniture. And when you're not using it, you want to unplug it and store it away. Okay. Another part of home heating is our furnaces. When's the last time you changed the filter? Has it been maintained? All right, a little bit of maintenance goes a long way in preventing your furnace going out when it's below freezing. You know, it goes out, you could get some frozen pipes. Now you got a bigger bill from a plumber. So a little bit of maintenance will go a long way keeping your house safe and the bills down. Also, in conjunction with furnaces or chimneys, those need to be maintained. We may forget, we need to have that thing cleaned, okay? The buildup of everything inside there can start chimney fires, which we commonly see once this colder season starts to happen because people forget to take care of. And then finally, I get to talk about this with kids a lot, so I don't usually get all the adult audiences, but I'm gonna do it right now. This is our friend, the smoke detector, okay? Everybody should have at least one of these, but 
it is recommended that you have a smoke detector on every floor, inside of um, every sleeping area, outside of the sleeping area, so like one in the hallway, okay? And when you're installing these, you wanna keep them three feet away from windows, vents, ceiling fans, and also if you're in installing them on the ceiling, keep them at least four inches away from the wall. And if you're installing on the wall, no more than 12 inches uh, from the ceiling, okay? You don't wanna be any lower. And then another part that goes with this is talking about carbon monoxide or CO. You wanna at least have one carbon monoxide detector on each level of your home. Carbon monoxide is odorless, colorless, okay? It's caused by incomplete burning fuels. So our heating and our cooking equipment that use fuel, they're sources of CO. The carbon monoxide detectors, you can purchase them. They plug into the wall, they're ceiling mounted, and they can also be a combination with a smoke detector, all right? You wanna check these things at least monthly. A lot of the smoke detectors are coming with 10-year batteries, but that's no excuse not to check the battery and do your test as regular, okay? Because these things fail. We wanna make sure that we're safe. So that's pretty much what I got for you tonight. I thank you guys very much for listening to me. And I hope you take this away because when this webinar ends, our fire prevention and education shouldn't end, right? We should be practicing in our homes every day. If you ever have any questions, you can reach out, but I'd be happy to answer any questions right now that might be on there. I don't see any comments. Okay. Um, but I'm assuming everything's pretty much the same as what I was taught as a kid, right? If a fire does start, you wanna stay low test the door before you open it, you know, yep, stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> we're definitely teaching the state, definitely stay low. I mean, you may not see it. So a fire starts in your house, right? And you go running out. There's a lot of hot gases up in that level where we're standing and that's mm -hmm. going to overcome your airway very quick and you're going to drop. So that's why you always want to mm -hmm. stay low. Perfect. Now, outside of um, obviously what the fire department does to help us in case of a fire. Is there any other services you guys provide for the community, um, like educational services or CPR training, anything like that? Yep, so Lakeville Fire Department, we do have a CPR program. It's kind of been put on hold though because of the right. coronavirus. And so what we do is we have information on our website on how to go with the CPR process. They would end up con uh, doing the online education portion and then they come into us and they do the testing portion where we actually see them do it and verify it. So we do the CPR. We've been doing a lot of public education when we can. Right now, we've had to slow that down again too. Um, fire departments, especially around, a lot of fire departments are involved with fundraising for groups. So one of the big groups we sponsor is like MDA and stuff. So we do get involved in those kind of efforts. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you, Justin, so much for joining us, uh, the Chamber of Commerce and um, teaching us about fire safety. I really appreciate it. Um, and I really appreciate everything that you guys do and that you guys are on call for us in case an emergency happens. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can reach out to us on the um, Chamber's Facebook page or even the Lake Villa Fire Protection Facebook page. Um, or you can, what's a good number for them to call you, a non-emergency number, if they have any questions or need anything from the fire department, Justin? Yeah, so you know the number's that? on the web, website, but you can also dial 847-356-7525 for any of your questions that you have. Okay, okay. And, and then, yeah, when in doubt, if you don't know to call 911 or not, just call 911, okay? <laughs> well, thank you so much again, Justin. You have a fabulous holiday. and. Um, a happy new year and hopefully we don't have to see you guys for the holiday season <laughs> absolutely wish you all the best thank you very much thank you bye-bye bye jamie